And let me remind you that we find ourselves in Jeremiah 4 in the middle of Jeremiah's first uh, and or second message. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah two times in one message. So some scholars debate, is it Jeremiah's first message or do we continue where we are in a second message? It doesn't matter other than you know that it is this first or second message of Jeremiah given to us in chapters 1 through 6 during the reign of King Josiah. Now, King Josiah is maybe the best king Israel ever sees outside of David. He's for sure second best guy. Hezekiah, he might have gotten him by uh, just a hair. But all that said, during the reign of King Josiah, there is a surface level revival going on. King Josiah loves the Lord, and so he as a king decrees revival and so reforms are made the temple is cleaned up and people are in the cities worshiping they're at church services they're sacrificing they're doing all the things that you did to be a devout jewish person in that culture yet in this time during this national surface level revival jeremiah is raised up by god to tell the people that you have and you are prostituting yourselves to foreign gods. And so his message to them is to return. In fact, in chapter 3, the word return is used six times. And in the Bible, six is the number of man to try to get man's attention. And if you've ever prayed for revival, please understand that when you're praying for revival, you're praying for the people of God to be revived first. We often connect revival with let's let the lost be saved, but the lost are never saved until the people of God are revived and on fire. And so you have to have first uh, been somewhere before you can return. And so to return is what he's saying to uh, your first love. And uh, let me get this because people are really struggling. So uh, somebody want to get tunes trash here. Uh, Tunes from Madison County, which is a lot like Reynolds County, in that we just, we burn our trash, or we just let it go to other people's property. <laughs> they, uh, in their defense, they were here uh, when it was raining sideways this morning, and they pulled this all off, having only flooded one power strip, uh, thrown one GFI breaker, and, uh, and squeegeed about uh, 10 gallons of water off of here. So they did it. Now, all that said, there's a surface level revival going on. And the Lord says, hey, return to me. And he wants them to come back to uh, Jehovah. That's his name for his covenant with the people. Jehovah God, I will become what you need. And I am your husband. And so they have prostituted themselves to foreign gods. He wants them to return to their husband. And if they don't, then the warning is... I'm going to send the Babylonians in and they are going to be my instrument of discipline to get you to repent. And your land will be burned and you'll be deported for 70 years if you don't uh, return. Now, verse 1 of chapter 4. If you will, here it is again. Return, O Israel, says the Lord. Return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you will not be moved. And you shall swear the Lord lives, and in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, the nations shall bless themselves in him, that is the Lord, and they shall glory. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up the fallow ground and do not sow among the thorns. So the first imploration here is to break up the fallow, or that's another word for unbroken, uh, the hard uh, soil of your heart. Now, this reminds us, if you're like me, I read it, and I think I go directly then to Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20, where, where Jesus gave the parable of the, the sower. And uh, he goes on to explain to the disciples about the parable. He's teaching them about parables. But he says that a sower went out to sow seed, and he said the seed is the word of God. And he sowed it, this sower, into soil, and the different types of soil are the different types of hearts that the word of God is sown upon. And he said that one type of uh, soil that the word was sown upon was hard. Uh, it wouldn't even receive the seed. 
And so uh, when it went down, the birds just came and snatched it before it could take root. He said there was a second kind of soil, and that soil was where the seed actually took root. Um, and as it began to grow, the roots went down, but it's very rocky there. And as the sun came up, it baked uh, the rocks and shriveled up the roots. And so the, the seed, it couldn't grow. He said there was a third kind of soil, and that was the kind where the seed actually is received and it springs up, yet in just a short time, it's choked out by the thorns, i.e. the cares of this world. But then he said, there's this fourth kind of soil, and the seed fell upon it, and it was good. It was tilled up. It was fertile. And there, the seed uh, produced uh, up to a hundredfold fruit for the sower. And so we understand that Jeremiah's ministry from chapter 1, verse 10, was to tear down and to pluck up and to destroy, to root out before he would ever uh, build or plant. And the idea is, it goes along with this, that it's pointless to sow the seed of repentance in soil that's not properly prepared. And so what he's telling them is, I want you to prepare your soil. And so the Holy Spirit is always the one who breaks up the fallow ground, but how he does it is he shines his light into our heart, and then we begin uh, to let him till it up. And in this way, he's saying, put away abominations. You've got to put away some stuff before your soil, i.e. your heart, is going to be uh, malleable, pliable, fertile enough to receive my word, uh, my seed, and then spring forth repentance. 